you want to look up the most famous one, just look up Sunlight Financials quarter four, 2022 quarter four um, publishings. They issued $34 million to Power Home Solar in M1s. And the Power Home went bankrupt and they're out $34 million. And I think like the biggest thing I've learned over the last year is that like accounting is the lifeblood of a business. Now, you, you put out a video a couple, of, uh, a couple of months ago, I believe. And by the way, folks, if you haven't seen Cody's YouTube channel, check out the YouTube channel. I believe, is it called, is it called Cody Teal Cody or is Teal, it equals? Yeah, we'll, we'll keep okay. it easy, Cody Teal, yeah. Cody Teal on YouTube. But you put out a video a couple of months ago, I believe it was called Why 90% of Solar Businesses Will Fail. Yeah. And you talked uh, about a number of things, which again, we might kind of consider insider secrets here in the solar industry. But let's, let's dig into that because people need to hear this. Why is it that you feel that the majority of solar businesses will fail? And what are some of the factors maybe increasing the risk and things that people need to, to, to deal with? Yeah, I think, the, the, I mean, the, if, you said, if you just look at that line in and of itself, it might be a little shocking, but if you look at any industry in its early nascent stages, all those companies go out of business, most of the companies go out of business just because one, the principles of that business are not well established, right? Like, like if, you, if I look for insurance policy today, 99% of all insurance policies are gonna be the same. That's because that industry has been around for hundreds of years or, or housing. Housing is gonna be all really similar. Solar, again, residential solar, while the technology of solar has been there for a while, it's only been in the last 10, 15 years where it started to develop. And so in terms of pricing, in terms of best business practices, in terms of well, cost controls and what consumers' expectations should be, business expectations, those just aren't established yet. And so people are going to cut corners because they don't know what the corners are. Mm. And those that cut the corners are the ones that are going to just, they're going to fail. And that's just, it, it is what it is. Um, that's with any industry. So what the point of that video was to really empower, not the people, well, hopefully the people, the, the solar owners, the, 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 we're few and far between, but the consumers and sales reps to, to step back and say, maybe I shouldn't be chasing the shiniest object. Maybe I should like peel back those layers a bit and ask some questions because this thing's going to be on my house for 25 years. And if I get 10 proposals, only one of those proposals is actually going to be able to service that full 25 years, which is kind of scary. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's worth taking time to consider not just is, what's good for me now, what's good for me in the long term future. Yeah, no, no, you're absolutely right. And I, I talk about this so often, I feel like I'm like a broken record almost, but it's like, look, solar is not one of those things where you want to shop on cheapest price. And when I, when I got into solar, and I think I understand why, but when I got into solar, there was a lot of misinformation out there from solar marketing companies yeah. that were essentially telling consumers, solar's a commodity, it's all the same, just look at the price per watt, that'll tell you who's giving you the best deal. Yeah. That's like saying, all houses are the same, all automobiles are the same, just shop on cheapest price or you know, miles per gallon. Yeah. That, that's, not, that's not at all the same. And I think what, you, what we also touched on a little bit earlier was that you know, installing solar, when, when you're a contractor, you, you don't know what your cost is gonna be. So this is where the risk of contracting comes in. You have to give a bid, you have to give a price where you don't know what your true cost is going to be. Now there's certain models for estimating that you can apply to get, to get close based on historical performance. But when you offer a bid for a job, you don't really know what the cost of that job is going to be. At the end of the job, you tally up all the cost and expense you might know, but then you still don't know what the long-term yeah. wa warranty service expenses of that job. And, and this is where I see a lot of contractors get themselves into trouble, is they price the job based on what's the cost of getting this installed today? How much do the materials cost? How much do I have to pay the installers to go out and do the job? What's my vehicle cost, my overhead? And so they put out a bid based on that with no regard for future warranty service, future hardware upgrades, software upgrades. And they just yeah. figure, well, uh, you know, I'll figure it out when I get there. Well, if they don't have enough cash reserve, they, they, may, not, they may not get there, right? Yeah. And then the homeowner's left with a system with a, with, a, with a warranty that's only worth the paper it's written on. Yep. Yeah. Now, one of the other things that you, you talked about is, is M1s. And again, I know a lot of solar folks, we don't like to talk about financing and how financing works, but this is a reality of our industry. 
just like mortgage finance, auto finance, solar financing is a big part of our industry, yeah. and it's a little bit different than some of those other industries. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about, you, 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 I think you did a great job in the video, by the way, explaining what, what is an M1 advance, what is an M1 advance really, yeah. and how could contractors and salespeople potentially get themselves into trouble if they mismanage those M1s? Yeah, so M1, M stands for milestone. So in, in any project, construction, you have milestones. And usually the first milestone, M1, is like a permit or some type of, hey, this customer's moving forward. And either a financial institution will pay an M1 to an installer or an installer will pay an M1 to a sales rep. Or sometimes we require homeowners to pay M1s or down payments, another word for them, for the initial project costs, right? And so the, prob the advantage of M1s is I want my money now. That's nice, right? Because then I can buy equipment or other stuff, right? The, the disadvantage for M1s is it makes your bank account look bigger than it should be. It's, it's not actually guaranteed money. I mean, imagine if I'm like, imagine this in any other industry. <laughs> like I'm, in, I'm, selling, I'm selling a house and I'm paying the real estate agent based off their pipeline of current potential buyers, not homes that are actually sold. That would be crazy. Yeah. And we do that all the time in solar. And so what happens is, is a lot like, especially with solar contractors is they, and, and financing companies are doing a better job of pulling back M1s, but they'll pay millions of dollars. Like you can look, if you want to look up the most famous one, just look up Sunlight Financials quarter four, 2022 quarter four um, publishings. They issued $34 million to power home solar and M1s and the power home went bankrupt and they're out $34 million. So they're out, they're in a set financial buying, the finance company is, who knows where all this money went. Mm -hmm. And it's and the, one of the reasons that company went out of business is because they thought they had $34 million in the bank that was money they could use, they deployed that money and then their their cash flow got all screwed up and when that money came due, they didn't have it. Or it was gone somewhere. That's just like, it, it's, it's fake money, it's not real money, it's not that fake money, but it's not, realized cat it's not earned it's not realized or earned yes and so if you can't account for it correctly just don't take it yeah no, that's a problem and, and you know again a little bit of my story I, I got caught up in a very similar problem with my contracting business where you know we were we had sales growth that was like 100 percent year over year for several years in a row and so you're right you see all this cash hitting your bank account more you know more cash than you've ever seen but you don't really have a sense for, of the cash that's here, how much of that is earned and available for me to invest how I want yep. versus how much of that is really restricted cash that needs yes. to be set aside in an account for specific purposes, like purchasing materials for this specific project, yep. as opposed to investing in buying a new truck or investing yep. in hiring more employees. And then that's where a lot of contractors get in trouble. Again, I'm speaking a lot of this guys from personal experience, is that if you don't have a, a tight handle on your cash flow and your cash management, yeah. it's very easy to see 100 grand in your bank account. Oh, I can go ahead and buy a new truck and hire a few more employees because yeah. the business is growing. The business needs these things, not realizing that 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 cash was for a, an install that's not going to happen for 60 days from yeah. now. And if that install goes wrong or the cost go, the you know the budget the job cancels or the job cancels, that, that gets clawed back. It gets clawed back exactly. Yeah. So you did, I think, a very good job of saying, look. An M1, an M1 commission or an M1 advance from a finance company, it's it, that's not earnings. That's a loan. That's a that's a loan from the finance company to you, loosely collateralized by the future revenues of the project. Yes. But it's not actually it's not actually earned. And so for whatever reason that cash does not become earned, the finance company may just pull it back. Yep. Right. But you still have to make payroll. You still have to keep your fleet yeah. healthy. You still have to pay your operating expenses. And so I think a lot of contractors, and that's what you said to be, a lot of contractors that have have become addicted to those M1 advances may find themselves going through a hard withdrawal here in the near future. Yeah, yeah, and I think like the biggest thing I've learned over the last year is that like accounting is the lifeblood of a business. And it took us six months of just hard, hard work to dial in our costs on a on a and and be able to predict them on a moving scale. And like, I guess, like probably my one biggest takeaway, if I had to give any to a homeowner or a rep or anybody, or even a solar owner is, is what is the accounting processes and teams of the installer? 
if, if they're using accrual accounting or gap accounting and they're doing monthly up-to-date reports, that's probably a, a contractor you want to work with or, or your contracting business is in on a, on a good rhythm and in the right direction. If that's not happening, I would just run away from that company. Just like go like, cause they, they don't even know where it, it's like a, it's like a per a human, like an athlete that doesn't know their, their times, their like body fat percentage or all that. Like it's like professional athletes not get, that's not even watching their body. That's what a, those businesses are. And so if, if they're using accrual accounting or gap accounting, and they're doing monthly and quarterly reviews, and they know exactly where their budgets are, they're probably gonna be fine. Every every contractor I've talked to that's gone out of business said, we just didn't know where we were out Every single one. That was like the number one issue. Yep. Yep. Why do you think it's gone this long? Why do you think it's gone this long before we've had kind of a day of reckoning like this? Um, M1s. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it is propped up. I, I hate to like, I. I hate to say it's because of subsidies or because things were so good, but that's partially the reason why. The reason I hesitate to say that is because every, like people are like, well, oil and gas does have subsidies. I was like, they have plenty of subsidies. Like, especially on the larger scale. Like if you look at their tax returns, their profits, plenty of subsidies. It's just, there's a little more stable, um, but it's, it's an infusion. There, there wasn't a huge infusion of capital into renewables. And so, that's what's made people think they had more. It's a bubble, right? It, it, it's a bubble. They think they have more money than there is. It's actually just air underneath. And now that that bubble's popping, um, we're, we're finding out who just, who did follow good practices. And those are the ones that are continuing in business. The ones that didn't follow good practices, that's not saying they're bad or good people. They just could be, just didn't know. They didn't know what they didn't know. Those companies are falling by the wayside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard, right? It's it, 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 it's it's hard, but I think it is a necessary a necessary sort of cleaning of house, yeah. you know, for this to happen. I, and and what happens, and this happens in other industries when there's economic contraction, right? Yeah. Is is that the the, the the strong companies shore up their position, um, talent, resources, equipment that has been improperly managed may yeah. be acquired by companies that are better managed that have better better financial position. And I think the same thing is happening in solar. Hey, if you enjoyed this interview and you want to watch the full-length version, be sure to visit the new Solar Surge podcast channel, where we're going to be talking to most of the top brands and top companies within the solar space to make sure that you have the most up-to-date industry information. Well, folks, that does it for today's video. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.